Right, welcome back to the channel guys. Um, I'll just warn you, this is going to be a long one, so grab yourself a good strong cup of coffee and uh, some matchsticks, keep your eyelids open, because uh, I know I've gone a bit. But um, yeah, this is a uh, follow on from my previous video, rear end teardown number two. Um, this is going to be uh, rear end restoration and number two. Um, I'm going to be concerning myself mostly with uh, eliminating all the rust as much as I can. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll start going through the processes in a minute. First of all, I'd uh, just like to give a bit of a shout out to all my subscribers. I do appreciate it. I really do appreciate it. And that's what keeps me going, to be honest with you. Because it is hard work, doing the work and filming it at the same time. But um, I get, you know, a few comments, not loads. but um, So yeah, I'd just like to give a shout out to Nige1840. Del Thomas 360, Medieval Assassin, wicked name, Martin JC, uh, D33Z Nuts, Z Nuts, I think, The Joker, The Goth Thing, and Do Dunk Houghton. Um, I'd like to thank you all very much for your comments and uh, supporting the channel. It's, um, it's really good, it keeps me going, and uh, it lets me know that there is a community out there. Um, I'm also aware there's quite a few videos at the moment there's a few other people that are doing exactly this job the uh, rear end corrosion strip down tree and the corrosion um, I'm not trying to compete by any means I'm just trying to add to the community and you know add to the conversation get people talking because you know it's just all for the love of the car really I think these are fantastic cars and um, yeah, I just want to encourage that community. I want to encourage conversation, the community that's building up around these things. Um, so yeah, I'm not I'm not trying to sort of outdo anyone or you know um, anything like that. I just want to give you my take on it and the things I've found. Um, in particular, um, what I'm trying to put across in my video is where I'm finding the rust, where I'm finding the corrosion, the the, the troublesome areas. The problematic areas and I want to get that across to you guys so you can have a look for yourselves on your cars and um, hopefully hopefully stop the rot and um, keep keep these things going you know like I've said before that's what it was all about for me um, keeping the cars going so yeah let's get into it So we are under the car currently, tank out obviously. So the reason for taking the tank out is these areas here. Don't ask me why but they, they seem to go there on the side of those chassis rails where the tank is. It's really difficult. That seam just there at the top of that. All behind the pipes, those plastic brackets must hold moisture, and likewise, just there. So, I'm going to be taking that brake pipe bracket off as well because I don't like those. I think there's uh, a lot of hidden rust in the, up behind that bracket. Likewise in the seams, all these seams here look. So I'm going to be doing best to get to those, get as much out as possible. Anything I'm not sure of, I can't get out, I'm just going to have to uh, go with the containment system. But um, I think I'm going to go for a little bit of like surface rust there look. The stuff that bothers me is in the seams and stuff, you know, I don't know if I'm getting this on camera, I don't know if it's focusing, but, um, yeah, that's the stuff that bothers me, because, uh, without drilling the spot welds out and taking it all apart, which I don't really want to do, that side do not seem too bad at the moment, I haven't had a close look yet, but... Yeah. Right, 
all up behind the tank looks pretty good to be honest apart from that little bit there Just wanted to point this out to you guys. This is the uh, chassis rail that runs along the side of the fuel tank. Now I've treated this before, but um, I don't know if you can really see it on camera, but still got some slight pitting going on there and uh, that seam at the top is slightly questionable as well I think I'm gonna have a bit more of a poke around out there now the other thing I want to show you so I've taken the bracket off now that you saw so surprisingly clean there where the brake bracket was, the brake pipe bracket was, but here, where this cross member goes across, and this is what I'm talking about hidden rust. So, that before I started poking around, I just went around the edge of that spot welded plate with a, with a pick. And I noticed right on the seams, right where the two bits of metal meet, 
there was a little bit of corrosion like say here for example the paint was beginning to flake and I scraped away right in that corner of that seam there where the two bits of metal were, where that overlaps at and uh, there was some rust I found rust along this edge and uh, I've kept going I've kept picking away at it and it turns out that obviously moisture must be getting behind this plate because this is all rusty behind here I wouldn't say it was bad there's only surface rust at the moment but this is what I'm talking about. And if you look at it from that way, look, you can see what I'm saying. So I'm going to stick the deoxy gel in there and um, let that do its thing for a few days. Keep coming back, flushing it out, cleaning it out renewing it and just do what I can to get rid of that eliminate it if I can but um, I don't think so I'm just going to be slowing it down like I said but yeah this is the sort of thing you want to be looking out for yeah so I've just got the I've just got the deoxy in there as best I could left it in there for days Cleaned it out, retreated it, done that two or three times. And um, there is some still, there is still some black little pit marks in there. And uh, I've just had to coat it with Hydrate 80. I, I, can't, I can't get rid of all of it. You know, this is just slowing it down. So I'm just doing areas at a time, smaller areas at a time. So I've done all that. Up there, and bits coming across as well. Now I'm gonna concentrate on these two areas. So the side of the chassis rail, just there, look. This is where all the brake pipes and fuel lines clip onto. Um, so again, this is several treatments. Now this is up. I'll just show you what it's like. It's pretty messy all this, but... So what I like to do is um, wash this down with Atom Mac 5%. I've said this before in my previous videos, I know, but... So it's Atom Mac. You're supposed to wash this gel off as thoroughly as possible, scrub it even. Bill Amber actually say scrub it in tap water to you know get rid of it as much. Obviously that's going to be difficult to do under the car. So what I like to do is just get rid of it as best I can with a, a brush and a cloth. A brush into the little, I use a little toothbrush to get into the little areas. Cloth stops this from going everywhere as well. So uh, this makes it a little bit cleaner to work with. Trying to get all the air out as well because uh, the air dries it out if you allow the air to get to it.
yeah right up in that turret there is some pitting so this is the uh, Genolite rust remover I'm using the pink stuff what I'm finding is if you scrub it with a wire brush leave that on for half an hour or so and then scrub it with a wire brush it does actually start coming out and you can see the general like the pink turning brown gradually so that's obviously dissolving the rust like it should be it's going to need i think several applications to be honest you can do this with uh, the oxy gel as well I just find this is a little bit more aggressive than deoxy gel. And it, it just, I don't know. Is it, I don't know if it's just me or what, but it seems to, it seems to get rust out of the pit in a little bit better than the deoxy gel. But anyway, yeah, you get the idea. So I'm just going to keep going like that until I think all the rust is out of those pits. Uh, um, like I've said before, you know, you're not going to know, you're not going to, there's no guarantee. I'm not going to be going in there with a microscope or anything and analysing it closely. So the go-to, like I've said before, in any of these areas is going to be the um, rust converter afterwards. Once it's all, you know, cleaned off and washed down, um, I'm going to be washed and dried. I'm going to be uh, applying the rust converter just in case, just in case I have missed any little bits, which I probably will, to be honest. You know, and uh, I'm under no illusion, really. All this sort of stuff on the underside of the car, where the car is not being dipped and I'm using these gels. I'm probably only delaying it, you know? I'm probably only slowing it down, to be fair. But I'm hoping I'm gonna be slowing it right down. And I mean, right down by, what I mean is uh, decades. I'm hoping that I'm not gonna have to touch this again. So yeah. I've got a lot to do, as you can see. So I'll crack on. So this is probably two months later after stripping the back end of this apart, taking all the parts off, suspension, tank, subframe. This is a slow old process, if you're doing it properly that is. So I haven't found anything terrible. Just quickly point out a few of the areas that I have found that are um, a little bit cause for concern. Side of that chassis rail there, there's some pitting going on there, which hopefully I've uh, stopped with the deoxy gel, combination of deoxy gel and the Genolite gel rust remover. side wasn't too bad funny enough it's a little bit there but not too bad caught that caught it all just in time I think but what I have been finding is I've been using a, a wire wheel on an angle grinder I found that the best 
poly wheels are pretty good as well, the stripping wheels, but they just wear out so quick. But um, what I have been finding with the wire wheel, it's not too aggressive. And I'm trying to do a complimentary, if you like that word, um, restoration where I'm leaving as much of the original coatings as possible. So when I go over it lightly with the wire wheel, any, let's see if I can find some for you, look there, look. Any uh, rust spots, they're like little blisters under the paint. I don't know if you can see them, they're like round, little round blisters under the paint. So what I'm doing with the wire wheel is just lightly going over it and knocking those off. But in the areas where I find there's quite a few, I'm going a little bit harder and a bit more aggressive and stripping the whole area. You know, like this, for example. A lot of spot welds I'm finding as well. I've gone. Spot welded seams like that. spot welded seams so this is back of the wheel arch I've opened that seam out there it's, uh, it's a little bit of rot up in there a little bit of pitting going on I've had some deoxy gel out there um, cleaned it out several times and now that's some hydrate AT just going off. I had a bit of a, had a bit of a crisis the other day. So I started using um, Genolite Rust Converter because I heard it had really good reviews but um, is the aerosol stuff that's got a good reviews not the not the paint on liquid stuff so be warned don't use the paint on liquid stuff because that actually has got really poor reviews so um i'm just sticking with hydrate 80 because i know it um, i'm used to it and it has got decent reviews hydrate 80 came second so and like i've said before in my videos bill hamber stuff i think is excellent yeah, so up here in the suspension turrets, on the actual walls of the turrets, I don't know if you can see the pit in, but um, I've spent a lot of time getting the rust out of those pits as best as I can. And uh, again, I know I'm repeating myself, but because you can't never be sure, you've got all the rust out, I've gone over it with Hydrate 80. So that's a good two coats on there at least, I think, so far, but I'm probably going to give it another one.
So each time you clean up area before you put the rust converter on, panel wipe. Let's get all the contaminants off. And once that's dried, you can uh, put your rust converter on. Especially on the bare steel areas, obviously. And overlap any previous areas that you've done. So just one coat when you're um, in the process of doing an area and you intend to take it off again. One coat is enough to stop flash off and give it some temporary protection just for the time being. And this is what I've got in the habit of doing. Right, this is uh, how the car currently looks. Don't ask me how long it's taken me to get to this stage because uh, I've just lost track. I've completely, it's a long time, basically. Um, I've spent lots and lots of hours out here on the weekends, evenings even. So now I am actually ready for paint stage. I'm ready for the, the primer. I've got two part epoxy primer to go on from Novel. I just wanted to make sure it was good. I was. I just wanted to be confident, you know, before I started putting paint on, that um, I got as much as I could. I mean, I not got all of it. There's no way. There's no way I'm going to get all of it. You know, there's still corrosion in some of the seams. Um, oh, the other place you want to be looking as well is the sills. A bit, a little bit difficult on the ST because you've got the plastic body kit the covers, covering up the sills, but up in there. So yeah, I've cleaned up all the, the spare wheel well. Um, that bracket there goes a bit as well. That's awkward to get into. Actually inside. any surface rust and it's not a, it's not hugely important but obviously you know you need to try and get as much of the rust out as possible and then treat it as best you can which uh, obviously is easier said than done with this but um, and uh, around the back of the, the rear chassis rails those areas Okay, so this is a little selection of tools I've been using. So this is the type of wire wheel I've been using, not the knotted one. I've um, been using various wire wheel attachments on the drills, on extension bars. There's the belt sander 
and there's a Dremel with the little grinder wheel attachments. Get them online. This is a little wire brush from Amazon I'm all about. You get three for like five or six quid, they're really good. Stainless steel wire brush that is. And then uh, just usual little hand tools, getting all the little awkward places. Emery cloth, sandpaper, pick. I find really useful for getting into little corners, little seams, scraping out the paint and exposing the rust. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all I've used. So obviously once you've cleaned areas up with your wire wheels, wire brushes, etc., get as much of the rust out as possible, you just start treating it with the gels. So that one there and that one there. That one there you can leave it leave on as long as you cover it with cling film. That one there is a more of a short duration, but I find that one slightly more aggressive and is quite good for getting in my experience, I don't know if it's just me, it's quite good for getting uh, rust out of pitting. Um, and then you know then you can start using your uh, rust converters if you're not sure that you've uh, completely eliminated all the rust out of an area so what I like to do is open an area up go back to bare steel get the corrosion out as much as I can with the gels then once I've cleaned it dried it I give it a coat of hydrate 80 just to seal it up just to stop any further flash off of that bare steel further corrosion I'm using this Novel two-part epoxy primer with uh, anti-corrosion. 120 quid for those two tins, believe it or not. But um, anyway, yeah, so you don't have to spend that sort of money if you don't want to. You know, if you wanted to do a, a cheaper version of this, I would say, and get decent results, I would say, use that, and then that's not bad. Before you go ahead and put coats on, make sure you wipe down with some um, degreaser, some decent degreaser, every stage. That's quite important actually, because um, your coat might not take as well. Um, for these converters to work properly, you need to make sure that uh, you have really got rid of all the grease. You concentrate on that. That is quite an important thing for these to work effectively. Um, so what happens is when you're taking the paint off, there's oil in paints. The existing paint that you're going to be taking off with your wire wheel, there is actually oils in those paints. So those oils will get into the bare steel, for example, and they will inhibit that they will hinder that reaction from these rust converters and you get what's called fish eyes um, I'm not going to bore you with the details but anyway that's is you know is important to clean up every time between every stage and that's what I'm about to do now so I'm going to be going over the entire area in the back of the car And uh, making sure I've got all the dust and any little bits of grease off.
So this is uh, first coat of primer on. A Nouveau primer. So quite pleased with the way it's coming out.
so that's it guys I'm gonna call it that's uh, two coats of the top coat on now as well as the primer so the top coat is the poly coat on the right hand side two part again and obviously the epoxy primer on the left again two part so is that all that on top of all the uh, rust converter rust treatments etc so Give you a quick look. So as you can see, I'm actually going further now. I've taken the uh, the remainder of the exhaust out, handbrake cables, heat shields, and I'm going to continue on with this area, the midsection. So on that side, I've actually cleaned. I've still got that side to do, but I'm going to do exactly the same process as what I did on the rear end. get all this treated, painted up. And hopefully this rust won't come back. Still got a bit to do as you can see, but I'm gonna call it for this video, I think, guys. Right, so that's it, guys. Very well done if you've made it this far. You have been outstanding to stay awake. The uh, next job is going to be cavity waxing. Again, built Hamber products. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And. Uh,